Good evening, everyone. This is Nadja Wright Brown here, and I have two fabulous guests on the show today. We are going to be talking about their new uh, restaurant, uh, Unsold Food. Everyone, meet the dockets, and, and we're going to find out what's happening uh, on their end. So, uh, starting with Natasha, talk to us about your journey. How did this all start? Uh, well, that depends. How far would you like me to go back? I mean, <laughs> oh, not, not too far. Not from when you were born. <laughs> oh, yeah, right. <laughs> Your plant-based or vegan journey. You're vegan or plant-based? Is it vegan? Or plant -based? Well, yeah, yeah. We're both vegan. Um, okay. Actually, we decided to... Well, I... I started off, um, I was a meat eater, and then um, I switched to pescatarian because I had vegan friends. Like and me. they kind of like, That's awesome. yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, and they like kind of talked me into like, you know, shifting. So I'm like, uh, I'll shift a little bit, but not too much. So I became um, pescatarian. And then that's when um, I met back up with my husband, Brian. Um, how did y'all meet? Like, how did that happen? So you're pescatarian. Yeah, we actually, uh, you said, how did we meet? Yes. Yeah. So actually we met in high school. Oh, wow. So, like, we were like high school sweethearts and like wow. we, we were together so high school, like until he graduated, he graduated 2007 and then I graduated 2008. So um, once he graduated, we kind of separated for about like, what, about six, seven years? Something like that. Yeah. And then been, been there, don't know. I've uh, been there, done that, know all about all that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um, after we separated, that's when I became pescatarian. And then um, when I met back up with him, he uh, was a meat eater and he was just like, you know, well, tell me about pescatarian and, you know, what does that mean and everything? And I was like, well, the next step is pretty much veganism. And he's like, well, what's that? And so we talked about it and he's like, well, let's just do it. And I'm like, uh, <laughs> you really want to go cold turkey? And he was like, yeah. So I was pescatarian and then he um, actually went cold turkey vegan. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much like how it started. And we just kind of went from there. But so I can't, how, how long? How long has it been since you both been on the vegan journey? It's been six, six years. years. Six years. Okay. Mm -hmm. Congratulations. You're inching Thank towards you. that that decade. <laughs> <laughs> so talk about the, the restaurant ventures. So I know you've been doing pop, you were doing pop-ups and catering and things like that. You know, kind of uh, reminds me of uh, what my, my husband was doing when he, he was starting the land of Kush. So you were going through that journey. Talk about that. So um, we, uh, our very first pop up was called Voluminati, <laughs> and um, <laughs> Voluminati like with a V, right? Wow! Okay. It was um, the the concept was to be a top secret plant based pop up, and um, so we only did uh, one of them uh, officially, and uh, it was six courses, uh, a pre core a prefix menu, and um, mm -hmm. people sat down for Valentine's Day, and then we made them six courses, including a dessert. And uh, that pretty much like got us off of the ground. After that, we started doing pop-ups all over the city. Wow. So how long from that uh, Voluminati, Voluminati until mm -hmm. uh, you actually started looking for a location? How long was that period? Well, to be honest, we were looking for a location before we even yeah. did Voluminati. <laughs> Um, before, before we even sold our first dish, yeah. before we even sold our first item, before people we even made mac and cheese, we were looking to open up a, uh, to have a storefront first. But that just goes to show you how long it takes to really find the right spot for you, you know? Right, exactly. Yeah, location, location. And, and you just came on a spot just recently. How, how recently? Last just, uh, about, yeah, like about two weeks. weeks about about yeah. two weeks ago. So how how is it going? I mean, we're in the we're in the the what the second phase of the pandemic. It's what over three months or about three months. Yeah. How 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 has that journey been? So looking for the location to what's going on now. What was because when we were looking, when Greg and I was looking, I should have had him come on <laughs> if he has time. I probably sent sent him the link, but um. We were in the middle or towards the end of the financial uh, crisis. So the major crisis that happened and uh, the 2008 to where people were, you know, losing their houses and, you know, going underwater and all that other stuff. And people thought we were crazy that we, we were going into the restaurant business. So now you're in the pandemic and you're opening this restaurant. What 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 are the challenges? What are the successful? You know, tell us that story. Uh, well, um. 
the, the challenges, to be honest, have been pretty minor. Um, oh, our wow. most di- yeah, our most difficult challenges are um, making sure that customers are staying six feet away from one another and that we put a limit as to how many people may enter the store at once. But those have been the bulk of our issues, to be honest with you. We've been receiving nothing but love oh, and support from like, the neighbors. We're and so grateful yeah. for like, everyone who just, like all of, all of the people who eat our food and like our Instagram base, like they just show us so much love. And like, mm-hmm. we're so grateful and appreciative of them because like we wouldn't be anything without them. And so yeah. they're like, they just, they just, we love them and they love us. And they're it's, definitely it's the wind there. beneath our wings. Yes. I would say that. <laughs> So is yeah. it is it is it um are you doing the the indoor or is it just carry out delivery? Uh we're just doing carry out and delivery right now. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Oh, we got some folks from uh, Louisiana Baton Rouge. Hey, hey, Joy, what's uh, going on? Awesome. <laughs> okay, so you're doing carry. How is that? Are you, you know cuz when when the pandemic uh hit us and we had to you know partially shut down the indoor seating of course we had to move towards more delivery uh we were still doing pickup where people can come in and order for pickup but those delivery commissions through the food partners can be so high are you going yeah. through that right now um at the moment we are working only exclusively through one delivery service mm-hmm. so it isn't really uh, uh hitting us as hard as it would if we were spread throughout caviar and uber eats and grubhub actually right now we're just using black and mobile oh good 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 that, yeah. that's the bet yeah because you know those yeah. those fees so now my initiatives did to kind of cut those feeds so we implemented something through uh, Square where, you know, it's significantly lower and the deliveries, yeah, so it's it's working out so much better. And then Google also has, I don't know if you're aware, Google has the um, ordering app where it's free until uh, June of 2021 and then your your restaurant can be listed on Google Maps, which is amazing. And you know, once oh. once the once they lift the the charging, I think it's like one point five percent, which is nothing compared to the fees that everyone else is is charging. So yeah, it's a it's it's a great time. Um, what are some of your menu hot items that are selling? Oh uh, well, number one. Well, I guess it would be two number ones. It's the mac and cheese and the seafood salad. Yeah, the mac are, and cheese and uh, the seafood salad. Wow. Oh that, yeah, the seafood salad. That sounds good. That sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> that, uh, yeah, because when I was uh, into seafood, that was a big hit for me. So okay, the mac and cheese and the seafood salad. Awesome. How? When are you open? What are your hours? Um. So currently, uh, our hours are eleven until seven, but uh, they're due to change. Uh, since we um, are dealing with some uh, technical difficulties with the landlord, but um, we're either going to stay here and we'll let everybody know, or we will be moving to another location in the local Already area. with the landlord? Yeah. Is that what was um, happening the other day when you made that announce something was going on? Yeah. Yeah. What? Unfortunately, we can't, um, we can't I, say I too much you. about we it. We don't, we don't, yep. Yeah, I just, because yeah. I did, I'm like, right. well, what happened? You just opened. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah uh, so it has nothing to do with the food or our willingness or our readiness. Unfortunately, it's just uh, paperwork ties that the landlord didn't take care of yet. Got and it. so um, we're yeah. just waiting for that confirmation and then we can have solid hours and, and okay. solid days. So when are you, like, what are the hours that you're open now? Or are you open at all now? Oh, uh, we, yeah, we ju- actually just closed. We just sold out early. We were supposed to close at six, but we just sold out. Okay, great. That's awesome. Sellout is awesome. Um, or do you have a website? Because I know we have the IG there. Is there a website that I can show people? What is the website? Um, our website is unsoldfood.com. Uh, on to find all of our basic history, our our bio, basically, and the awards we won. right the awards, mm-hmm. and also um the the current menu offering. Uh, as of right now, we don't have the online ordering set up, but that will be taken care of as soon as possible. Yeah, that'd be great. Yeah, just make sure it's uh it's cheap because you don't want to eat up all those fees. I mean, we learned a lot of things as we go along, but it's definitely needed. So it's unsoulfood.com, uh, and they're in Philadelphia. Uh, I sent a post message definitely saying that uh, when when me and my husband are up there, we definitely have to check you out. We love going to places to eat. So we just don't always eat Land of Kush. We even in Baltimore, we like traveling and and, and eating other foods. Um, so talk to me about about what's your response or have you experienced the the question of 
vegan food not being real food. Have you come across that? We have in the past, uh, mainly I would say from our families, <laughs> but- uh, <laughs> That's yeah. family, huh? <laughs> yeah, definitely. But to be honest with you, all of our customers have been understanding and they haven't been, um, how would I say, abusive with their words. They've been very interested and they've been very open-minded about options. I, I feel like we're, I feel like we're in the, uh, the business of like tricking people a little bit because like we have quite a few people who come in that's not vegan and they're like, okay, you know, I'll give it a try. You guys seem nice and everything. So I'll give it a try. And you know, they're like, are you sure there's no milk in this? Are you sure there's no cheese in this? Are you sure? And we're like, we cannot put yes. anything that we don't eat in it. So no, there's nothing. And they're just like, wow, you know, this is great. And I'm, I'm we're just like appreciative that they like it. But I mean, um, yeah. yeah, we get definitely, we get more customers who are not vegan than customers who are vegan. Yeah, you, yeah, you find that because that, that's the same experience that we, we have. So it's kind of like we're not carding anybody anyway. It's good food. It tastes good. So, you know, that's all we're concerned with, you know, that you're coming in and that that, that you enjoy the food. Um, do you have any employees or is it just you two work in the store? Nope. It's just us. <laughs> um, I'm, I'm in the back. I'm in the back. He's in the front. So, so he's you're, out there with you're, the you're the cook. Natasha, yeah, well, 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 actually, we both prep in the morning, so okay. like I, I couldn't do it without him. Like, so he helps me prep, he helps me get everything together, um, and then so once everything's organized, I'm pretty much just like putting everything together, you know. But we both cook in the morning, and then I'm in the back during service, and then he's out front with the customers. And I mean, we do, we would love to hire people, just you know, like we said earlier, when we pretty much figure out what's going on here or get a stable location. Mm -hmm. That's when we want to really start sure. hiring people. We, we learned um, throughout our travels and, and just throughout life lessons that there are many things that you can give someone, but the greatest thing you can give somebody is a job. And exactly. so the, the very first moment, the very first opportunity we get to, we're going to hire as many people as we can. Yeah. And we're going to spread the love as far as we can. Yeah, that we pride ourselves here of hiring within the community. So it's it's it's, it's definitely uh, a feeling when you're you're hiring uh, from within the community and being able to show and and help them to develop and then share your story of how you open up because it's not an easy process. You go through a lot of things. Hey, Paige, yeah. Paige wants to know whereabouts are you? Where specifically are you located in uh, uh, Philadelphia? So our address is 1839 Poplar Street. That's spelled P-O-P-L-A-R. And it's right at the intersection of a town. Well, basically, the town is called Francisville. And the other section is called Fairmount. But either one of those sections of Philadelphia, they'll pop up on Google. And we're right at the intersection of both. Awesome. Were there any documentaries or books that inspired you to become a vegan? Uh, one documentary that we watched the night before we went vegan, yeah. uh, it was called Earthlings. Okay. Yeah. I hear that one a lot. Earthlings. Yes. Yes. Yeah. yeah. And, um, Natasha, she couldn't even finish yeah. the video. No, and uh, I, 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 cried, I cried my eyes out. I'm a crybaby. <laughs> I literally cried my eyes out. Couldn't finish it. I didn't um, watch the whole thing either. It's it's a little, you know, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks for that. We appreciate your support at the Land of Kush. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Any books? What about with the cooking and, and all that? Have you read any books or you sell? No. Okay. So you sell okay. It's like all off of our, um, our family recipes that uh, we learned growing up and we just veganized them. Yeah. I mean, well, he went to culinary school. Um, okay. What school did you go to, Brian? Yeah. The Art Institute of Philadelphia. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I went. I went for culinary. That was a uh, 2011. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, but we both have um, our master serve saves. Um, so like you our know, manager serve. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah. I said master. I don't know why. <laughs> our manager serve saves. So we both have that. And I mean, I just been like um, cooking since I was eight. I know that's really terrible to say. Sorry, I'm sorry for my babysitter because she, she was the one who let me do it. But um, <laughs> yeah, so so I mean, it's just like both of us together, we just yeah. put our thoughts to, to it and some things worked, some things didn't. So it was just pretty much trial and error and then it just clicked. That is amazing. We have an eight-year-old too, uh, vegan. She's been uh -huh. vegan 
sits the womb. So she's definitely Aww. getting into the, the cooking. Um, she's definitely getting into the cooking and she loves to watch us cook. I hadn't been cooking for a while because daddy does all the cooking. He's the uh, the executive chef and recipe creator. Ah. I mean, I, I come up with some ideas and, you know, he'll test them out. But I've just been cooking with some uh, organic um, vegetables lately because I've been getting these boxes that they've been giving away and then I've been just doing things with it. And my daughter's like so happy that I'm cooking because I know how to cook. It's just that I, I'm not trying to do all this big cooking because one, oh, I'm just saying. doing a whole bunch of other things and, you know, it takes time when you want to cook from scratch and, and yeah. Yeah. you got to be up for it. But now I'm really getting into it and then she's getting into it too. Uh, so it's a, definitely an a exciting time. Um, we have another question. Somebody just asked me another question here about when did y'all go vegan together? Did I just miss that? No, no, no. Someone asked that. And, okay. Um, working together as a couple. So you've known each other since high school. And then you were <laughs> off and on. Um, talk about being in a relationship and business. Because me, <laughs> me and my husband... We've been working together ever since we met. So I came down to Maryland in 2005, and we met uh, in 2006. We were working at the same job. And so fast forward, we're in 2020. So that's that's a long time. So there's a lot of stuff there. How many years, when you're saying from high school, how many years, and what is the dynamic there? Like from strengths and weaknesses, and, and, and how do y'all, how, do, how does the synergy work? Let's talk about that. For all the yeah. Out there in business. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, okay. So to be honest, um, uh, I think uh, most couples, I guess most couples have an issue with seeing that person at home and then going to work and continuing to see that person and then <laughs> always there. <laughs> right. Um, the, but we don't have that issue. I don't, I, funny enough, we don't get sick of each other. But I think it's. No um, we promise. I think it's because. Uh, how long did y'all say? How long y'all been together? Fourteen years. Fourteen. Wow! Wow! Yeah. Like That's we've nice. like we've known each other. We've known each other for fourteen years. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow. But, um, so, we definitely got to come up there and meet you too. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. <laughs> we got to come down to Thailand to cook. We've been aiming to come down there for like years. Yeah, we've been talking Literally. about it. We've been talking about coming and trying your place since about there. two. We've been up there to, to, to Philly. Um, but you know, we, we it's, that's your place is def definitely on our list. <laughs> definitely. You, you're going to have to bring us something too. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you you haven't had any challenges. You you both kind of synergi synergy is great. Who, yeah. What are the strengths and weaknesses? Because you know there's a yin and yang factor there, right? I think um yes. I think I am a basically because I'm a Taurus. I'm more uh, logical. A lot of yep. things. Uh, and my wife is, uh, King, she's more on the side. Yep. So <laughs> I end up finding. Uh, operations that we have that perfect balance of emotion and and you know logical thinking that really helps us throughout the day okay. and so we may run into some uh, stump blocks but we were able to come up with solutions very quickly which is a great benefit to have okay and, and now you know you we were breaking up but i mean you were breaking I, I, up the day, I think you, you were breaking up when you were talking brian you said natasha is a what was her sign Cause you're breaking up a little bit. She's a cancer. Oh, she's a cancer. Okay, I love cancers. My husband is a cancer. I can't. So I know all about cancer. <laughs> so I know what you're dealing with. <laughs> oh. <laughs> yeah, we're very emotional. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah. So I think we um her emotion and my. Her emotion, her emotion and me being logical, I think that it's a perfect balance when it comes to running a restaurant. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. I'm, I'm so into the numer numerology and the astrology. So um, that that is awesome yeah. and amazing. That is, that is incredible. And I spend blessings your way. Um, what, what would you, okay, I know you knew the restaurant business um but i would definitely want to ask you anyone going on this journey to opening up their own restaurant what are some tips that you would recommend or some best practices uh, i would say uh focus on your paperwork 
Oh, the paperwork. Definitely focus on your paperwork. <laughs> <I> like to do. <laughs> yes, yes, paperwork. Yes, you know, you know the paperwork is most of the battle, actually. So I would definitely suggest that everybody get their LLC immediately. Mm -hmm. Find out about your EIN number, your business tax receipts, all of that information. And I would say get used to working with people who may be difficult because we found that in business when doing business with other people, <laughs> they often have their own ticks about them. And so you just have to understand that you're expected to work with some difficult people sometimes and don't discourage you to continue to be you and, and to strive for what you really want. Give us an example of those difficult situations. So, because, because I'm, I'm sure. <laughs> so, give us a situation of a difficult person that you work with and how did you handle it? I'll name anyone. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we were, we were in to run a, a vegan restaurant in Philadelphia, well-known vegan restaurant in Philadelphia. And um, we were hired to fix the restaurant and to save the owner out of debt. And uh, the owner, although he wanted us to help him, he refused to take any of our good advice. And so we were forced basically to continue to do what he said while trying to make the proper suggestions, which is somewhat like babysitting at times. Impossible. <laughs> okay, so you came yeah. in there more like consultants and, you know, gave some recommendations. And yeah, yeah, it's hard because, you know, we, we've had people that work with us and sometimes, um, you know, folks can be set in their ways and, you know, not embracing, embracing of the change that needs to be made so they can move forward. So yeah, I, I, I can see what you had to go through. Um, yeah. Here goes that question. They, they were asking, uh, did you decide at the same time to go vegan? So that, that was Troy, right? Did you both decide at the time? I think you said yes. I just want to make sure it was the exact same time. Yeah. yeah. That's, Cold that's, turkey that's, off of pork bacon. Yeah, I swear. I, I came in like, oh, you know, to my husband, like, well, you know, I'm going to take, I'm going to eat my seafood and, you know, I hope you can deal with that because I don't think I'm ever going to get, you know, rid of the seafood. And then I definitely transitioned into vegan, especially after he told me that the shrimps were scavengers and they ate carcasses. I'm mm -hmm. like, oh my God, I can't do this anymore. <laughs> We had something happen with the camera now, so we're losing you. Okay, good. Yeah. So that was like kind of the end of the seafood age for me. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, let's see what we got here. Oh, hold on one second. What? Oh, yeah. We're losing them here. Uh, well, any questions while we're waiting? Uh, well, while we're waiting... Let's talk about subscribing to NajaSpeaks.com, okay? So you can watch the replays of any of the uh, live broadcasts that I've had so far. Also, you want to um, go to bvsmd.org. We have tw a 20 fresh salad recipes booklet that you can download if you opt in to giving us your email. Uh, you can get the recipes guide. And we also have the African American Vegan Starter Guide on the page. Just click on uh, education for, and it'll say Veg Starter Guide. So you can download the African American Vegan Starter Guide by the fabulous Tracy McQuirter. Okay, we, we're losing the dockets uh, and we might have to sign off. I want to uh, thank uh, Jane Unchained for allowing us her platform to use uh, as well as um, all the other platforms that we're using. We're on the Land of Kush, Black Vegetarian Society of Maryland, Vegan Soul Fest, and um, Naja Speaks. Yes, the movie Cowspiracy, that was it. That was it for me too, Troy, um, because it you know, it came from an environmental lens and it kind of touched on a lot of different things, including the animal rights, uh, as well. So yeah, that was it for me. So we got, we lost the dockets. I'm going to end the broadcast. I pre, oh, they're back. We'll see. Let's see what's going on here. Okay. They're coming back on in. Okay. Okay. Good. We got you. Okay. That's the connection issue when you're in, right? Okay. There we go. <laughs> Okay. Okay. We have Lizette. I've gone. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely. To help with fibroid tumors. I wish more black women knew about this as a way to address the health concern. Yes, Lizette. Uh, absolutely. 
correct because um, mm-hmm. it is affecting uh, our black women in the community. And we, we can at the land to teach them about the health and healthy eating in terms of whole plant based meals. So, Natasha and Brian, talk to me about your perspective on. Uh, whole food, plant based versus you know what you may term your vegan junk food. What, what, what would you say about that? So, so um, we're firm believers in uh, the whole foods, plant based diet. Uh, we are uh, well rehearsed in carbon redox molecules and the effects that the body has. Um, we actually serve vegan junk food though. Uh, mainly because uh, our goal is to convert people to being vegan. Yeah, yeah, but I hope I'm positive relation between that and the right amount of water will cure anything. Exactly. I mean, some people that I mean, people need a transition, you know, and the familiar foods like we have the Kush barbecue ribs, we have the curry chicken, we have yeah. the winning crab cakes, you know, folks. Some folks need those to transition, and of course, we offer the live foods too, like the kale salad and um, different salads, and then you got your smoothies and you have the juices. So, you know, something for everyone, and including gluten free options. That's a big thing now, too. Gluten-free. Do you have gluten free options on your menu? Yeah. Uh, we have some, like obviously, uh, well, our cheese is gluten free, so we definitely have uh, our, our cheese. Uh, uh, which we add to all dishes, um, mac and cheese, adding a gluten-free version. So it's going to uh, that should be ready hopefully next week. Okay. And um, just the, the basic stuff like the French fries and the other things on the side. Okay. We will add a completely gluten-free sandwich with gluten-free bread as well. <laughs> so I say, yeah, man, I love junk food too. Yes, I know, Tina. <laughs> I love my pizza. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to end it off with one last question. <laughs> we do too. We do too. Um, what okay. are your thoughts about the, um, the, the movement in the black vegan, the black veganism? Like, what are your thoughts on where it's going? Uh, you know, we see a lot of articles coming out saying African Americans are the fastest growing demographic in the movement. Uh, do you agree with that? And if so, where do you see it going? Like, what is your perspective on that? It is really good. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I think it's most important in the Black, having and adopting or at least being open to a vegan diet in the Black community is where it's most critical because we are plagued with things like high blood pressure and diabetes and like she just mentioned, the, the, the tumors, the thyroid tumors, those things like that, it, it's, it's just more reasons for the Black community to be interested in trying food that's not just health, but that tastes good. And I think that in opening up to the other parts and movement is one of the movements I would say personally. Then Natasha, do you have anything to say? Uh, yeah, I mean, he, he pretty much says it all for me. <laughs> I mean, we think alike a lot. But um, yeah, I, I definitely think it's very important. And um, that's why we're here. Like, we want to just get people to try the food. And then once they like our food, since it is junk food, we'll admit, um, then they can go on to, you know, other things like other journeys, like you said, you know, the smooth and the kale and salad and everything where you know if you start even if you're starting from like a junk food point of, point of view and then going into a healthier state we feel like even that's better yeah. but just to try it into like into you know a routine is is, is a great thing we think yeah, I definitely think that vegan junk food is a gateway drug. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, a lot of people, you know, uh, gravitate toward that, towards that. And then some, what I say is the folks that uh, don't want to, that, that are meat eaters and they're not sure about all this mock meat stuff, it doesn't hurt to have a smoothie. A smoothie is not going to kill you. At minimum, you know, have a smoothie opposed to a dairy 
milkshake. I mean, you can do that, you know, banana strawberry smoothies are really good and healthy for you. Yeah. Um, yes, Terry. Uh, yes, they're trying. Yeah. To us. I talked about that this morning on on uh, the morning show that I have. Yes, they're trying to kill us. They're actually trying to raise more funds. You can go to they're trying to kill us .com. Um, John Lewis, the badass vegan. It's, it's going to be a phenomenal uh, documentary because it's being worked on by the same director that worked uh, What the Health and Cowspiracy. So please, they're asking at minimum ten dollars to support uh, the documentary. They're trying to kill us. Well, I thank you too for taking your time out because I know you're busy. You know, doing all of these great things that us restaurateurs do. Um, Natasha Byron, Unsoul Food in Philadelphia. Please make sure you check them out if you're in the area. Um, and information will be on their website. So let me show that again, unsoulfood.com. Thank you again. And until we go up there and meet you, please, blessings. Send yes. blessings your way. Have a good With one. All our Thank you. <laughs> Have a good one. Thank you, you too. too. Bye.